Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Listen, I am in the energy of Tropical Storm Debbie. Uh, so I know the lighting is awful. My kitty cat is disturbed and traumatized. Um, but I think it's going to actually be worse tomorrow. So I'm trying to knock this reading out. I'm trying to tell them. Yes, it's a lot. It's very upsetting. So if you missed the August 2024 Love Tarot Energy Update, that is available for you. If you missed the New Moon and Leo reading for the collective, go watch that. Because if you miss me here tomorrow, that was what I'm trying to say, that today's the New Moon. So go watch that. Um, but Aries, you're, you're getting your reading. So um, here we go. It, we are in Lion's Gate. The portal is now open. It peaks on 8-8. So this series of readings is dedicated to Lion's Gate. Whew, let's go. I am pulling from Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. Let's see what message comes through. This one, I'm, I'm going to read the messages right out of the guidebook for you. Let's see your message since this is... Um, the portal that brings us light codes, activations, ascensions, manifestations. <laughs> Aries, you get the top light codes. Light initiation, great teacher awakening, and divine magic. So let me find your message. It's alphabetical there it is your message says you are blessed to connect with Toth you are going through a powerful set of light initiations at this time and these are preparing you to lead and teach from a powerful space of love in order to complete the process there will be a release of old ideas and limiting stories but this is necessary for you to connect with the true power within you. Don't be concerned by the intensity of the energies that surround you right now. Facing shadow parts of yourself and your story is essential for connecting with divine magic and evolved beings of light are there to lead the way. And evolved beings of light are there to lead the way. If you have any concerns or fears at this time, know that when fear gets loud, it's because you're on the cusp of something extremely powerful. Mmm. Yes. Toth light codes. Good message. Okay, so in honor of Lionsgate, I am doing my Twin Flame spread. So we're going to look at um, what you're working through right now, what your person's working through right now with regard to the connection, sort of what the present energy is between you, then your karmic challenge, their karmic challenge, the opportunity um, for being presented to you for you in Lion's Gate and the divine guidance with regard to ascension. Hmm. Three of Cups, yes. Possibly about, um, you know, coming back together for some of you. Uh, reunion and reconciliation energies uh, cause for celebration. So I like that energy. It can also be referencing third party. So let's keep that in mind. Six of cups for you. Six of wands for them. This is all about reconciliation of the past life soulmates. Yes, your karmic challenge, their karmic challenge, opportunity, and divine guidance. Right. I love this. So there's um, an energy here that I'm feeling that um, there's something you, you two, when you are in this energy of reconciliation, you also need to sort of pull together to protect from outside interference because it's a source of conflict, okay? Um, your karmic challenge with temperance is all about deep breaths, going with the flow, right? Um, it's sort of a, a higher... Um, it's a higher wisdom, spiritual wisdom, a, a sort of spiritual patience. It's not like, uh, I'm going to be patient now. It's not that. 
It's something that comes from a deep within, right? Like, a, I don't have to sweat this or push this or hold myself back. It's just sort of born out of an energy of an awareness that it all kind of comes into flow and balance eventually, right? So that's your karmic challenge. You're going to work through that. Your person, Nine of Cups, has an interesting it's a sort of a similar message because the nine of cups also can speak about balance um and it can speak about you know not being too complacent but also you know ha seeking some wish fulfillment but you you kind of have to sort of um uh, you can't you can't fall prey to well this feels good enough yeah this is good no i'm not gonna put in the extra effort or, you know, uh, like that 10 of cups is just, is, is too much for me. So there is something here for your person that's about balance at least because temperance is also about balance. And your person with the six of wands is about um, their, what, what they're working through right now and where they're at right now is uh, about finding compromise, the common ground between you. It is about reconciliations as well. You have the six of cups. I love that we have each of you with a six because in tarot, sixes are level steady. So the six of cups, past life soulmate, comfort, steady. Um, it is um, warmth where you feel safe. Uh, now, in the opportunity, Ace of Swords, there's some information that may come to light. There may be something that you both can see, like you see something maybe differently, something coming to light or maybe something being revealed. Uh, could be a little bit of an epiphany. Five of Wands is uh, the divine guidance, and that's where I'm talking about some outside source of interference. The, there may be something vying for one or the other of your attention. There could be something coming from outside that causes conflict between you, and so you kind of have to guard against that. That is my opener. Let's just see what the details have to say. Three of Cups. Yes, yeah, four of swords, four of pentacles, and the moon. So this um, reconciliation and the coming back together could be very healing, right? Um, unless you hold back, unless you start throwing up walls, unless you're too guarded because of fear, because you let your insecurities lead. And now when I say you, I mean both of you. It's your shared energy. So this is what, why I'm doing this is because Lion's Gate is about ascension. It's about this manifestation portal. This ascension portal allows you to see where there might be some cracks in the foundation, where there might be opportunities to throw some putty in it so you can shore it up, so you can right, build upon what you already have. So I feel there's opportunities for something you can um, heal here if you don't let your, you know, your tendency to kind of guard uh your fears your insecurities and when i say insecurities i mean born out of something that's real and legit i'm not calling you an insecure person or them an insecure person i'm saying we're, we're souls having a human experience and stuff happens that we go like yeah i don't want to i don't want to touch that iron again right but this is a different this is a different ironing board situation <laughs> So <laughs> we have to sort of, you know, test it out and <laughs> give ourselves a chance, drop that center pinnacle a little bit and, you know, make sure we have all our safety precautions in place and then operate from intuition instead of fear. Okay. So let's look at you with your six of cups. Seven of Pentacles, Two of Cups. This is the one you've waited for for a very long time. This is the partnership. This is the soulmate, the past life soulmate. You kind of wrangled it here to 3D. So yeah, you're ready for a cause for celebration. You're ready for the reconciliation if that 
fits to your storyline. Remember, it's a general, not a private. So you, you know, you got to take it as it resonates for you. That's what you, that's where you're at right now in this connection. That's what you're working through for Lionsgate. Is it something you've waited for? And now it's about to arrive. Six of Wands is a triumphant homecoming. But it's born out of an, uh, out, there was an opportunity with the Six of Wands. The knight is coming back from battle. And there's, in most decks, it's not here. There's a wreath on, on the wand. And he's coming back to the king and he's saying, right? No blood was shed, no men were lost. Our kingdoms have made peace. That's the message. There was, you know, rapprochement, there's peace. We compromised, we worked it, shit out. So that's why I call it a reconciliation card plus a triumphant homecoming. So let's see your person here with the Six of Wands. Sorry, it's, Debbie's bringing some humidity with her. <laughs> okay, oh, all right. So what he's working through is he wants it. He wants to come in with the message of apology. A little stuck little overthinking, right? And, and some worry and some anxiety and maybe not sure what to say, overthinking, second guessing, all the self-limiting beliefs popping in their head while they try to sort out, what should I say? How should I approach? So this is somebody who really very much cares that they get it right, that they say the right thing, that they don't mess it up or make a situation worse, especially if this five of wands belongs to you, right? If, if, if that five of wands is actually between you, if there's been drama and chaos and conflict between you, then this person certainly, you're already like, I, I've been waiting for this reconciliation and they're like, yeah, but I don't wanna mess it up or say the wrong thing. Whew. And temperance is in your, um, karmic challenge because it's something you need to work on. It's something you need to kind of be aware of and own and say, yeah, you know, I got the seven of pentacles too because I'm not the most patient person, right? Okay. Someone told me I say right a lot. I'm gonna try really hard to do that. But you have to realize I'm on this side and nobody's saying, if you were here, you'd say, yeah, right. <laughs> I wouldn't have to. You'd be saying it. Okay, anyway, temperance, right? <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Okay, so now I see why this is your karmic challenge because there's been a little bit of trouble in River City where something has seemed like... Um, either some game playing or, or something that felt a little sabotagey or backstabby. <laughs> and there needs to be a cleanup on aisle five. There needs to be some communication that clears the air about whatever it was that played itself out. The five of swords can be gossipy. It can be an unfair fight. It can be someone that has treated the whole situation like a zero sum game. If I don't get my way, nobody's going to get there. That kind of a thing. So temperance is that internal, like, it's all going to work out. It's all, it's, I, I just know I have this spiritual ascended wisdom that tells me I just have to, it's, I don't have to wait for anything. I don't have to, because I know that it's just the rhythm of life. It, it works itself out. It always does. The energy's coming to flow and balance. If it isn't spiritual wisdom, it's just science. <laughs> it just does. So that's something that needs to be focused on. That's your karmic challenge, is that this conversation does need to take place, but the timing of it is not under your control. It's um, part of your ascension process here. Okay, so now let's look at your person with the Nine of Cups that I am now seeing as a little bit of complacency. King of Pentacles, 
strength card. Six of Pentacles. Mm. Mm. Yes. Because what's really needed in this situation is a little more give and a little less takey-takey. And they know it. And they have to sort of show up. They know it. And so the strength card is them sort of gathering up their strength, courage, and confidence. Because right now, they don't have the confidence that they will find the words, the right words at the right time, to say what's needed, to bring some assurances to you that they have your back. Because you're sitting over here sort of showing me as the reader that you don't think they have your back. So the Nine of Cups, their, their albatross is um, psyching themselves out of doing the thing that they know they, they should do and that they need to do uh, and just sort of letting it ride. You can call it, some people say, the Nine of Cups can be a little bit of good time Charlie energy of, eh, you know, it, it wasn't a big deal, really. No, it, it was, it was, it is. So I'm seeing this more as your person's karmic challenge is to not let this ride too long, to be brave enough to face it, to say what needs to be said, to acknowledge um, how you felt or how what, how what was said or done was not fair and to be sure that they make clear that they understand. And your karmic challenge is to give them time and space to not just come to the realization, which I believe they already have, but to come to you when they find the confidence to do so. Spine, backbone, whatever. Okay, the opportunity for the two of you here, Ace of Swords, Oh, Seven of Swords, Ten of Swords, Ten of Swords, I'm sorry, Ten of Cups, Nine of Pentacles. Well, again, I feel there's like a lightening of the load here that will bring the most happiness. And I'm saying that for a reason. The seven, of, <laughs> the seven of Swords, there is like, as he's running away, he, he could have, there's a couple he's leaving behind as he's skirting away. And yes, the Seven of Swords, uh, most readers are talking about, you know, he's kind of getting out of Dodge. He's stealing some stuff. He's, you know, it's the liar, cheater, stealer card. I often see it as an avoidance card, something like doesn't want to face it head on, very dodgy, very shady. But it's also a card, uh, the seven is a very spiritual number, and all cards in tarot have um, some positive interpretation to it. And because I see this clarity, this insight, this something, some truth being shown to you as, as a gift from spirit, and I have the beautiful energy of the Ten of Cups and the Nine of, of Pentacles underneath, which is really this sort of self-assuredness, this confidence, this, you know, um, energy of, I, I, I'm a whole person on my own, they're a whole person on their own. And, and then there's like, but maybe we just kind of need to offload some stuff that, we, that really isn't serving us anymore. The Seven of Swords. And just, just to prove that to you, I'm taking out my favorite little guidebook here. Uh, because I'm not hallucinating it. It says, this card often reflects editing and moving forward with only what is essential. That's what I'm really tapping into here, seeing that you have to edit out some shit, right? If you really want the happily ever after. Be good with good enough. Yeah, you've got a lot here. You, you, you're, you've got enough on your own. Edit, edit down, edit out 
let you know and take take what's good in this connection and edit out some stuff because divine guidance coming in with the five of wands Mm -hmm. perfect message of that seven of swords because when you have this time to yourself after some kind of drama and a lot of heartache and heartbreak if you really want the reunion the second chances the reconciliation, the forgiveness, the redemption, then you have to edit out some things that you that can't come forward with you. You can't take them forward and still have this beautiful energy. So in other words, you've learned a lot through this process of self-discovery. In the time you were on your own, and this is respective of, I'm talking clearly to those of you who have had a hit a rough patch and now you're ready to reconcile. And clearly your person here is um, contemplating with much anxiety and self-doubt uh, and apology for something that there was a falling out and a lot of thought and, and time alone you should come through it as different people. There should be growth that is evident for both of you because you're being called up. You're being called back. That's what the card is about. Second chances at happiness, at this connection. It's available to you. That's the divine guidance. And so what I'm saying is now that you see it very clearly, you, you have to kind of leave some things behind. I have to edit this. Take only what's essential because you're on this beautiful path going forward. And I'm going to stop with that because I absolutely have a plan for the extended where I want, I want to look at especially this person um, because I'm seeing some, some doubts creeping in and I want to kind of get a handle on the higher vibration of this person and the lower vibration like what's working out angel devil kind of style, um, some hidden energy, something you may not know, might want to, um, uh, what's their message to you? What do they want to say? And we'll explore some other energies of this person before I give you the astrology that showed up here. If you, if this reading has spoken to you, if it has given you some insights, some things to think about, if it has helped you with your new moon intentions, your lion's gate intentions and manifestation, please subscribe below. Help me grow the channel. Thank you very much for considering that even, but, um, and for those of you who've been so gracious and helpful and supportive, um, you're everything. I, I so appreciate it. Okay, here we go. So we're starting over here. The moon is Pisces. We go next to Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Temperance is Sagittarian energy. The Knight of Swords is Gemini. The King of Pentacles ooh, is um, Taurus. Leo in our Strength card uh nine of pentacles is virgo scorpio pluto here which rules scorpio i think i got everything okay and don't forget um i still am running the lion's gate private reading special 88 dollars off my regular rate the link to that is also in the description box below and the link to the private reading is in I mean, the link to the extended is in the description box below. It's all there. Just go in the description box. Bye for now.